Hello everybody and welcome to another A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthrough vi video. In this video I'm going to be looking at how testing for ions and amounts of substance link together, which is going to be of use to everybody, but it's going to be particularly relevant to people who are doing AQA required practical 4, because that is testing for ions. As ever, you can download the questions in the description and I'll be showing you the thinking behind the question in blue and the answers will be in green. The questions we're going to take a look at in this video are one long nine mark question where we use amount of substance throughout and we link it to testing for ions and then two multiple choice questions which I think could easily turn into long answer questions and we'll have a look at how we could unpick those and where more marks might come from than the one that we get from multiple choice. This first question uses anhydrous strontium chloride. We've been told that it's used in toothpaste but it absorbs water in the atmosphere and that the hexahydrate form of the same chloride is preferred. Then a chemist has been asked to determine the purity of a sample of strontium chloride hexahydrate. They weigh out a particular mass of the sample add it to 100 cubic centimetres of water. The mixture is then warmed and stirred for several minutes to make sure all of that strontium chloride is dissolved. The mixture was then filtered into a conical flask and an excess of silver nitrate solution was added to the flask and the contents swirled for one minute to make sure that the precipitation was complete. As I've been saying that, I've been drawing a diagram of what's been happening in this experiment, just so we can really understand what's been happening. The silver chloride precipitate that formed was then separated from that mixture by filtration, then it was washed several times and it was weighed and found to have a mass when dried of 1.55 grams of silver chloride. And so the first question asks us to calculate the amount in moles of silver chloride in that precipitate. And so we just have to do mass over MR, they've given us the MR, and we have to then get a value of 1.08 times 10 to the minus two doesn't have to be in standard form, of course. Then the question moves on to take a look at the equation for the reaction between strontium chloride and silver nitrate. And so then we have to use our answer from part one and that equation that they've given us to calculate an amount in moles of strontium chloride needed to form that mass of silver chloride. And so we can look at the equation and we find that the coefficients are a one for the strontium chloride and a two for the silver nitrate. And so that means that the silver nitrate that we calculated in the first question is the 2 to the 1 of the strontium chloride. And so we have to divide that value by 2 to find the moles of strontium chloride. And we get 5.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Then they've asked us to use our periodic table to calculate the MR of strontium chloride hexahydrate. So that's this formula up at the top. And they've asked us to give our answer to one decimal point. That was kind of generous because they don't always tell us that we need to have it to one decimal point. They sometimes say, give the answer to the appropriate precision. And for an MR, it is one decimal point. And so we have to add together our strontium, our two chlorine atoms, and then our six lots of two hydrogen, so 12 hydrogen, and our six lots of oxygen. Having done all of that, we get an MR of 266 Point six to one decimal point. And then they ask us to use our answers from part A, two and three to calculate the percentage by mass of strontium chloride hexahydrate in the sample and show our workings. So whenever you're working out a percentage by mass, it's good to visualize the whole. And I've represented that with the pie chart. And so the strontium hexahydrate is just one portion of that. So we have got 2.25 grams of sample. That's our whole sample. Some of that is strontium chloride hexahydrate, but not all. And so what we have to do is work out what mass the strontium chloride hexahydrate has by using its moles and multiplying it by the MR that we've just calculated. And so the strontium chloride hexahydrate will react with the silver nitrate in that same ratio. And so what that means is the moles of strontium chloride hexahydrate is going to be the same as the moles of strontium chloride would be because it would be the same reaction. And so that means that the moles that we calculated up at the top is going to be the same as the moles down in this question as well. So the moles is 5.4 times 10 to the minus three. We then have to multiply it by the MR, 266.6, and we get a mass of 1.44 grams of this hexahydrate. 
then we have to do the percentage purity. And whenever we're doing any percentage purity, it's the mass of the pure substance divided by the total mass of sample. So 2.25 is the total mass of sample. And we found that we've got 1.44 grams. And so what we have to do then is we have to do that fraction, but then of course we have to multiply it by 100 because we've been asked to get this as a percentage. And that gets us a value of 64.0% strontium chloride hexahydrate. And that's a really common type of question to work out a percentage purity. Note that you can actually do this calculation using moles if that's more appropriate given the data in the question, but mass is typical. And then the question goes on to say several steps in the practical procedure were designed to ensure an accurate value for the percentage by mass of strontium chloride hexahydrate in the sample. And by accurate, they mean close to the true value that it should be. I've just repeated the method here so I can point at it while we look at the question. There's nothing new there. And the question says, explain why the solution of strontium chloride was filtered to remove insoluble impurities before the addition of silver nitrate. Well, it's often good when you've been asked to explain why something is the case to think what would happen if it wasn't the case. Well, if we didn't do that, we would get an incorrect mass or more specifically, the mass would be too large because it would include those insoluble impurities as well as the silver nitrate, well, silver chloride precipitate that we want to get. And then they're asking us a follow-up question to explain why the precipitate of silver chloride was washed several times with deionized water. And what that does is that removes the soluble impurities that might be present in that sample, in the crystals. So that means there might be some leftover silver nitrate solution or some strontium nitrate that's formed might still be attached to that precipitate and we need to wash that through to make sure none of that gets left behind in the uh, on, on the filter paper. Then part B, we've moved on from the chloride chemical tests to the hydroxide and magnesium. And we're told in this question that those two compounds of magnesium are used to reduce the acidity in the stomach. And we're told that magnesium hydroxide can be prepared by the reactions of solution of magnesium chloride and sodium hydroxide. And we've been commanded to write the ionic equation for the reaction that occurs between magnesium chloride and sodium hydroxide, including state symbols. That means that's one of the few times when we absolutely have to include state symbols, and they've told us to include it here. So you need to remember that magnesium hydroxide is a precipitate. It's a white precipitate. And so the formula for magnesium hydroxide, you can just remember it, but magnesium's in group two, hydroxide is one minus, the two plus ion for magnesium will be therefore MgOH2 solid. And then the ionic equation, I always say is easiest to work backwards. We know what the two ions are now. They are magnesium ions, two plus, and hydroxide ions, one minus. The only thing to do now is to make sure we include the state symbols. And all of this, including balancing and state symbols, vital for that mark. And then the final mark in this question is, other than cost, explain an advantage of using magnesium hydroxide rather than magnesium carbonate to reduce the acidity in the stomach. Now, this is not something that is explicitly taught as part of the chemical testing topic, but we know that when you use chemical testing, we can actually test for carbonate ions because they fizz in the presence of acids. This is a practical application of that because obviously we're reducing the acidity of, in the stomach. And what will happen as a result of that is the carbonate will react with the acid. Brilliant. It will reduce the acidity, but will also make carbon dioxide gas. And what that means is we'll feel bloated. We might have um, a distended stomach or increased pressure in the stomach or, you know, just producing this carbon dioxide that we need to get rid of. And so any of these things that I've written down, absolutely fine for this final mark. And we're going to take a look at a multiple choice question now because I want to get us into the mindset of multiple choice, but also because I think this could actually be an, a longer mark question, particularly the next one. This one probably maybe two marks maximum. So we're told in this question that magnesium reacts violently with an element X and we don't know what it is, but we do know that it produces a compound Y. 
then aqueous solution of Y is treated with aqueous silver nitrate and we get a white precipitate. So now we're thinking white precipitate with silver nitrate, that means chloride ions were present. And that's confirmed when we read on that when we add dilute aqueous ammonia, this white precipitate dissolves and we know that's what happens for silver chloride. We in fact make Tollens reagent, which means that Y was presumably magnesium chloride. And what that means is the magnesium must have reacted with element X, which is chlorine. And so now it's just a case of plugging our value that we've been given for magnesium into this grid. So we know we've got 4.05 grams of magnesium. We know that the relative atomic mass of magnesium is 24.3. So we can work out the moles by doing 4.05 divided by 24.3. And when we do that, we get a value of 0 0.1667 for our moles. And then what we have to do is look at the equation, or at least look at what I've kind of sketched as an equation, which shows us that one magnesium will react with one chlorine to make MgCl2. And that makes sense because there's one magnesium in MgCl2, but there's two chlorine in MgCl2, and there's two chlorine in Cl2. So what that means is that the mole ratio is going to be one to one. So the moles that we had in magnesium will be the same moles that we've got of chlorine. And then we look at the MR of chlorine and we find that the MR of chlorine is 71.0. And then we multiply MR by moles to get the mass and we get 11.83 grams. And that obviously means that it's answer A. In this final question, we're told that vanadium reacts with chlorine and we make a brown compound. Then we're told that an aqueous solution containing 0 0.193 grams of this compound is treated with silver nitrate. And then all the chlorine in that compound precipitates into silver chloride. The mass of silver chloride produced was 0 0.574 grams. And we've been told in this multiple choice question that we need to work out what the formula is of the brown compound. Obviously, this is only going to give us one mark because it's multiple choice. But if it wasn't multiple choice, I think we could probably get two, three or four marks, depending on how generous they're feeling, because there's quite a lot of steps going on in this process. And the first thing that we need to do now we've worked out what's actually happened in the reaction they've described is actually just work out what this brown compound is. Well, it's obviously got vanadium and chlorine in, and our four options here are all with the Cl as being one, two, three, or four. So we've got VClx, and we don't know what that value of X is, but we know it's one vanadium to a certain number of chlorines. But the method I'm about to describe would be absolutely fine in a situation when we didn't know whether it was V2Cl1 or something, for instance. This method will help us to that answer. The first thing we need to do is work out what the moles of silver chloride are that have been produced. Well, the MR of silver chloride is 143.3, so we do the mass divided by the MR and we get to moles of silver chloride of 4.01 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. The really important thought process is that in that number of moles of silver chloride, so the whole thing, there'll be that many number of moles of silver and that many number of moles of chlorine. And it's the chlorine that we care about here. So what we know is we've got 4.01 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of chlorine. And that chlorine all came from this brown compound. So we have to work out what that mass of chlorine is. Because once we've done that, we can work out what the leftover mass of that brown compound is. So in other words, what's the mass of the vanadium? So to do that, the mass of chlorine is that number of moles multiplied by the relative atomic mass. So 35.5. That gives us a value of 0 0.14 grams. When we take that mass away from the 0 0.193 grams, we get a mass of vanadium of 0 0.053. Now, that is in grams. The relative atomic mass of vanadium is 50.9. So the moles is 1.04 times 10 to the minus 3. And last of all, we need to turn that into a ratio. And we can tell probably by inspection here what the ratio is going to be. But the strategy is to always divide those mole numbers by the smallest value, which of course is the vanadium. 
anything divided by itself is 1, and when we divide our 4 times 10 to the minus 3 by 1 times 10 to the minus 3, we of course get 4, which means there is 4 moles of chlorine for every 1 mole of vanadium. And that means, of course, that our correct answer here is D, V, C, L, 4. So one mark here, but could easily be two, three, four marks in a longer mark question. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.